Okay, uh, I'll continue here. Yeah. All right, every man is British by his, this, this is, this is Jeremiah. This is kind of getting back down here. I'm losing it, I'm losing it here, I'm losing it here. This is Jeremiah 51, chapter 51. And the reason I'm reading it because of, of what's taking place in Iraq seems to me to be going along with this a little bit here. I'll continue. Every man is British by his knowledge. Every founder is confounded by the graven image, for his molten image is falsehood, and there is no breath in them. Their vanity, the work of errors, in the time of their visitation they shall perish. Who's that visitation which made these idols perish? To me, it was Isis. Isis went in and destroyed those uh, ancient idols of Babylon. The portion of Jacob is not like them. For he is the former of all things, and Israel is the, is the rod of his, of the, his inheritance. The Lord of hosts is his name. Thou art my battle axe and weapons of war. And I don't know who he's talking about here. It could be talking about Sunni Islam right here. For with thee I will break in pieces the nations, and, I'll, and with thee I will destroy kingdoms. And with thee I will break in pieces the horse and his rider. And with thee I will break in pieces the chariot and his rider. And to me, that seems a bit full because usually in those, uh, when the Sunni set off those car bombs, it gets the, ch the chariot, the car, and his rider. And with the all breaking pieces, the man, the man and woman. And with the all breaking pieces, young and young, old and young. And with the all breaking pieces, the young man and the maid. I mean, really, when, when those Sunni Muslims set off those car bombs on like Iraqi Shiite uh, marketplaces and whatnot, it, it not just it just doesn't get them it, it gets young and old it gets it gets innocent it gets everybody in those areas and I'll break in pieces the shepherd in his flock and I will break in pieces the husbandman and the yoke of oxen and I will break in pieces captains and rulers and I'll rend unto Babylon which could be Sunni Islam in a time or Iraq and all the inhabitants of Chaldea and Chaldea is uh, located in Iraq in our time all their evil that they have done in Zion in your sight, saith the Lord. Behold, I am against thee, O destroying mountain, saith the Lord. And I'll destroy us, which, uh, yeah, behold, I'm against thee, O destroying mountain, saith the Lord. Now, it could be talking about Sunni Islam here. Which destroyeth all the earth. And I will stretch out my hand upon thee, and I will roll thee down from the rock, and will make thee a burnt mountain. And they shall not take of thee a stone for a corner, no stone for a foundation, nor stone for foundations, for thou shalt be desolate forever. And I don't need I don't I don't know if that means that no one's gonna be in Sunni Islam anymore or all hell is gonna break loose and and Iraq is gonna become middle become uh, radioactive. I'm not really sure here. So it's either literal or symbolic. I really don't know here. That's if that's what it's talking about here. Set up a standard in the land. Blow the trumpet among the nations. Prepare the nations against her. Call together against her the nations of Arat, Mini, and Ashkenaz. Arat, Mini, and Ashkenaz are located in what is now present-day Kurdistan. Arat, Mini, and Ashkenaz. Uh, appoint a captain against her. Cause the horses to come up as the rough caterpillars. Prepare against her the nations of the kings of the Medes. And the Medes are located in uh, present-day Iraq and Kurdistan. The captains thereof, and all the rulers thereof, and all the land of his dominion. And the land shall tremble and sorrow. So what I what think is going to happen is, when they come down, they're going to kick. The Kurds are going to come down and kick Sunni, upright Sunni Patuni prostration. They are going to kick ISIS's Sunni Patuni butt. But, in the process, when they do that, if that happens, it says, And the land shall tremble and sorrow. For every purpose of the Lord shall be performed against Babylon to make the land of Babylon a desolation without an inhabitant. Now, if that means Iraq, that means you're talking nuclear stuff. That means when you know, Blamer gave Iran $150 billion in 24 days to hide stuff, that means, she always tells me that Iran is going to have more than just one nuke. Or it could be symbolic, and that in Babylon could be Sunni Islam, and this means there's no more Sunni Islam once the caliphate 
in Mosul is destroyed. The caliphate that uh, Oblimer tried to set up. Um, yeah. The mighty men of Babylon uh, have forborne to fight. They have remained in their holds. That did happen during the first Gulf War. They might have failed. It happened in the first Gulf War, even in the second. They became as women. And as I said earlier, when Saddam saw them giving up and kissing their feet, kissing the Americans' feet and stuff, Saddam said, oh, they're like, they're like women. And I just found out that the Sunni, that the, <laughs> the, the ISIS tried to escape out of Mosul dressed as women. Not all of them, but some of them. They have burned their, her dwelling places. Her bars are broken. One po now, to me, this part has been fulfilled with Saddam. One post shall run to meet another. And it could be with al-Baghdadi also. I'll tell you why. One post shall uh, run to meet another and one messenger to... Uh, I better stop it here. Bye. Let's see, how much time do I have left here? Oh, it's still going. Good, good, good. Okay. Yeah, I can still go here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um... Okay, one post shall run to meet another and one messenger to meet another to show the king of Babylon that his city is taken at one end. To me, that happened during um, the second Gulf War. Saddam didn't use phones. He used messengers and couriers because he thought if he had a phone, he would be hit by a missile. And I think the same thing is happening now with al-Baghdadi. He's not going to use a phone, but he's going to use carriers to show that Mosul is being taken at one end because he doesn't want to be hit like, like would have happened with Saddam if... If Saddam had phones, so they're going to use carriers. But that's the reason why Saddam didn't use phones. He didn't want to be hit. He thought they'd lock in and get him. So he used carriers, posts, just like talking about here. To show the king of Babylon has taken that one in. But I think, I, I think right now it's, it's talking about Saddam because right now I think the king, the king of Babylon is a blamer because he owns Iraq. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And that the passages are stopped. They're trying to stop them to keep them from leaving uh, Mosul right now. And one messenger to me. Okay. And the passages are stopped. The reeds they have burned with fire. And the men of war are frightened. When it says the reeds have burned with fire, to me that was fulfilled during the first, right after the first Gulf War. Because what Saddam did, he drained the marsh lands. And he burned those reeds to get at the, the, the Marsh Arabs who were against him because they're Shiite. They were against him because he's a Sunni. And he drained them and burned them. So that's like a mixture. To me, that's already been fulfilled in the first Gulf War. I mean, really, if you see pictures of Iraq before the Gulf War, it's all green. But after the Gulf War, it became dry because, again, Saddam damned those... Pat those marsh, those marshes to get at the the uh, marsh Arabs who are Shiites who were trying to overthrow them. Okay, oh, I better stop it here. Bye.